Okay, so this is my latest game. It's a recreation of the first level of Super Mario Brothers. Now, I didn't know how to make a platformer before this game. Uh, I kind of just fumbled through it and sort of figured it out. And what's funny was that the only reason I chose the first level of Super Mario Brothers to recreate is because I was trying to make a platformer before, and uh, I was trying to make a moving platform, but I couldn't figure it out. So I was like, the first level of Super Mario Brothers doesn't use moving platforms. Why don't I just do that? Which turned out to be infinitely more complex, but, you know, you live, you learn. So why don't I just boot that up? And uh, it uses Pygame and Python, of course. Uh, why don't I just go into it? So all the sound effects, all the music is there. I would say this version is about 90% of the original version. And I say that... Oops, the uh, sound effect didn't work. Uh, I say that with the... Uh, it may seem closer than 90%, but when I look at this game, I can't help but notice the, the tiny little inconsistencies. Because, for example, uh, the hitboxes aren't right. The way Pi game works is that there's an invisible rectangle and that for each sprite so there'll be one about right here and it's invisible and that's how you detect collision based on that rectangle and your image is put on the screen flush left to that rectangle but the problem is is that uh, rectangles in the original Mario is actually not flush left, it's actually kind of centered on the image itself. Now that wouldn't have been too much of a problem to make my own uh, custom collision functions because they're honestly not that complex, but uh, I had already written all the collision stuff before I realized this, and I wasn't about to rewrite it for that tiny little, so for that one person who might think that, oh the hitboxes aren't quite right. Check this out. Uh, just playing it, I noticed there's a couple bugs. First of all, the coin for some reason didn't update here. That that shouldn't be that shouldn't be very hard to fix. Uh, and the there, for some reason there wasn't a animation sound when you went from big to small. Again, not a big deal to fix, but I guess I just forgot about it. Uh, yeah. So I don't know what else to say about it. I'll chop the music because it's pretty annoying. It's not annoying. It's great music, but when you've heard it so much, you just kind of get sick of it. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the last thing I'll say about the actual why most most platformers and games in general use something called tile maps, which just means that uh, the level is created of about of tiles. So if you look at the blocks on the bottom, that is one tile there. It's a uh, 16 pixels by 16 pixels, and all basically everything in the game is made by that unit. But I didn't actually do that. I didn't have any kind of system of tiles that puts the level together. I actually had a, the background is just one huge image that stretches out. And then for the ground, and for the ground, for the pipes and the steps of the level, that's, there's actual no, there's just invisible rects, invisible rectangles that are placed on top of them. So here, 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 here so that Mario can jump on them. But it's actually still part of the background. Now that's a crazy way of doing it. What I should have done is just taken the actual tile map, or tile set, which I had, and just construct the level manually, not manually, but with a, with an automated, with a, with a tile map. So, you know, with, uh, it's hard to explain, I guess, but have a file that represents the location of every every 16 by 16 block on the entire screen and then paste it onto the and then put it onto the screen that way instead of manually hard coding every single uh, block by location. I'll show you actually what I mean by that in a second. And uh, but yeah, overall it works pretty well. Like I said, a few bugs, few tiny inconsistencies, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, I can just load up quickly show you what I mean by the hard coding, but Again, I didn't know what a tile map was before I started this project. I didn't even know 
how to make a platformer. I just kind of muddled through it, but now I know if I was to remake this or to recode it, I probably should check out the, the idea of a tile map. I don't think I'm explaining it very well what a tile map is, but I'm sure you could Google it and get a get a sense of it. So honestly, this this particular the the there's one class for the level itself. So for the backgrounds, the collisions, that kind of thing. Now, if you look at these, these functions basically hard code everything, all the all the pieces of the level onto the background. So this is the setting up the background itself, which is which is you know just getting the image and stretching it to a specific uh, aspect ratio. But the, this stuff, this is hard coding the invisible rectangles on the ground, on the pipes, and on the steps. And it 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 looks like a nightmare to get all these numbers in there, because these are just coordinates on where on the screen they are. But it actually didn't take all that long, maybe a couple days. But these are all the bricks, all the breakable bricks. This again, this is an insane way of doing it. It's a bad way of doing it. But I didn't really know any better. Here's the flagpole that I put together. Um, this is me setting up where all the enemies are going to be. Um, these are invisible checkpoints that add the enemies to the level. They're very, they're just hard coded in there instead of using a tile map, which again, a bad way of doing it. But honestly, it worked pretty well. It didn't take me that long, but. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what else to say. I learned a lot doing this project. Uh, I think it was, I learned a lot because it's kind of a huge project, a lot more code than I expected, and it really showed me how important it is to organize code into cohesive chunks or cohesive uh, sections, because, I mean, even, a, even though I split it up so much, the level state, it's, or the level class itself is... It's over, it's over like 1400, 1,400 lines long, which is crazy. Like the Mario class itself is is 1,100. And I mean, I split it up quite a lot between like the enemies, like all the components of the, of the game. So I think as much as I learned about separating code into, into objects and individual classes and stuff, I think I still have a lot to learn. But I think this project kind of showed me how important that is. Yeah, so uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, the code's on GitHub. I'll have a link if you want to look at that. And uh, yeah, check it out. Bye.